Good morning. Welcome to Wednesday of SEC Media Days. A year ago is the day we were the center of breaking news. My goal today is to not break any news on Wednesday of SEC Media Days, trying to bring a smile to your face. Before I introduce Sam Pittman, I do want to acknowledge somebody who's back behind the curtain just by happenstance. I failed to do so. Uh, in the spring, we hired David Cutcliffe as what's called a special advisor to the commissioner. It is actually the title that Joe Torre has in Major League Baseball. And then we spent a number of years looking for someone who could work in our office, who had been in locker rooms, traveled the roads recruiting young people, who actually lived the game of football. And we're really happy uh, to bring David on board, obviously change in his direction uh, after the fall season of 2021 created an opportunity for the Southeastern Conference and to bring him back home, if you will. And I know he's been busy visiting with folks, but I wanted to identify him, recognize David, thank him for his work already, and uh, offer uh, him as a point of conversation for each of you. That said, we're here uh, for me to introduce Sam Pittman, who's entering his third year is head coach of the Arkansas Razorbacks. Last year, the Razorbacks won nine games. That is more than they won in the three previous years combined. So it shows the progress, the Razorback program under Sam's leadership. That ended with a win in the Outback Bowl over Penn State, over Big Ten member Penn State in the Outback Bowl. Arkansas finished the season ranked 21st in the AP poll, 20. In the USA Today Coaches Bowl, the first time since 2011 they ended the season ranked in one of those polls. Uh, for the first time of history, in history, uh, the Hogs captured all three of the program's trophy games, so that's the Southwest Classic, winning an LSU for the Golden Boot, and then beating Missouri for the Battle Line Rivalry Trophy. Also a victory when they renewed what is a historic rivalry with the University of Texas, one we'll see more in the future. Sam has in his office a functioning jukebox that is real and verified. And it's my privilege to introduce the head coach of the Arkansas Razorbacks, Sam Pittman. Good morning, everybody. So glad to be here, uh, glad to be among you uh, all uh, this morning. I want to thank Greg Sankey, uh, certainly the best commissioner in football, uh, without a doubt, uh, most knowledgeable. Uh, also want to thank William King. William King has done a lot for me uh, through the SEC office and Certainly appreciate him. Hunter Juracek, you know, I will say a little bit about Hunter in that he's a wonderful boss. And I say it that way, but he, he makes you feel like you're working with him, not for him. Um, I want to thank him for my contract. Uh, he went to work with Jimmy Sexton and uh, with the board of directors. It wasn't easy. It took a while. Uh, but Hunter kept working, and I felt like he worked for me, uh, for the university to make it fair. In that contract to SEC non-compete clause, I wanted that. Uh, I wanted to sell, sell stability in our program, and I wanted to show the state of Arkansas my loyalty to them. And uh, so with that non-compete, I'm going to be able to uh, coach throughout my career, uh, hopefully as long as we win, obviously. Uh, at, the, at the University of Arkansas. We brought K.J. Jefferson today, uh, Bumper Pool and Jalen Catalan. Uh, told the team yesterday, if it's up to me, you know what I'm going to say, and how to bring the whole damn team. Um, however, we're allowed to bring three, and we're represented well. With K.J. Jefferson, he was our leading rusher, leading passer, uh, was the MVP of the Outback Bowl, and he's a returning captain. Uh, from last season. He's, he's our quarterback. He makes us go. He sets the tone for our football team. Bumper Poole uh, is a, what I would call a super senior coming back. COVID senior year, had 125 tackles at his linebacker position. Great leader, great kid. Uh, can, I, I believe if he stays healthy, I believe he'll be the all-time leading tackler in the history of the University of Arkansas. Jalen Catalan we brought along as well. He, he was a captain last year for us, as we all know. 
Uh, he was hurt halfway through the season, uh, went ahead and had some sh surgery on his shoulder. He's the leader of the secondary. Uh, he, he gets everybody in alignment. He can run downhill. He'll hit you. Great kid. I'm excited for you all to meet those three kids. Like I said before, uh, they're going to represent the University of Arkansas in a fine, fine manner. Just a quick recap. Uh, Commissioner Sankey said some of it. Um, our, uni our university continues to graduate student athletes. Um, Chris Evans, Felicia Sane, their crew and academics. We, we've graduated 100% of our football athletes who have exhausted their senior year of eligibility ever since I've been there. Most wins by the program since 211, finished ranked in the top 20 in the coaches poll, won four trophies. That was a big deal to our football team, big deal, to have all three of our rivalry trophies and certainly the Outback Bowl trophy. No one on our team had ever had one of those trophies. And uh, we were fortunate to have all three of them. We led the Power Five in rushing. I think what that does, that tells us what we're trying to do with our program. We want to be a physical team. We want both sides of the line of scrimmage. We want to win the line of scrimmage. And we want to be physical and tough. And uh, to do that is hard to do. I, I was an old line coach for a long, long time and never was able to lead the Power Five in rushing, but we were able to do that last year. April 22nd, we handed out bowl rings. Some people ask, well, why do you hand out a bowl ring for Outback Bowl? Because I wanted to. And um, because it's something that nobody on our team had accomplished. And, um, you know, you can set goals, and once you reach one, that ain't the goal, that's one of them. And once you reach that goal, we're going to celebrate it. And uh, then we're going to move on. That was the last time our team talked about last year. Proud of our coaching staff. We have two new coaches in Deke Adams, who's our D-line coach, and Dominique Bowman, who came over from Marshall. And both of those guys are recruiters. And both of them are loyal, and both of them are great men. And our team has, has uh, received them well. They were both in for spring ball. And uh, both of them are recruiting at a high, high level. We kept our three coordinators in Kendall Bryles, Scott Fountain, and Barry Odom. Uh, they're all loyal. They're great coaches. They're all better men. Um, we are one of eight Power Five teams to have a pair of coordinators returning for the third consecutive season. Portal's been in the, for a long time in coaches. Administration stepped up and helped us keep Cody Kennedy when others came calling. Jamil Walker, our strength coach, has done an outstanding job with our kids. They work. You know, the, the purest form of team, go in there and watch your team work out in the weight room. There's no offensive line versus defensive line. There's no linebackers versus running backs. There's none of that stuff. It's a team. It's pure. It's fun to watch. Uh, I enjoyed watching that this summer. Uh, Jamil Walker and his staff do a, a great job. Challenging schedule again. I think this is the third year in a row. Well, I've only been here three years, so I know it's the third year in a row that we've been awarded the toughest schedule in, in college football. All 12 of our this year's opponents made postseason play uh, last year. Our crossover games are with South Carolina and Missouri. South Carolina, obviously, uh, Coach Beamer has done a great job there. A lot of enthusiasm. He's one of, you know, I don't know what tree he's out of, you know, as far as uh, is he with Kirby or, or uh, Oklahoma or whatever it be. But uh, there was myself and Coach Tucker and Dan Lanning and Coach Beamer all came from the Kirby Smart tree at some point. Uh, and, and I'm certainly indebted to him. But uh, Beamer's done a great job there. South Carolina comes in week. Two, they got a lot of thing, great things going in their program. Missouri, obviously, is a, our other crossover game, um, which we're trying to make a rival. We haven't won the game enough times uh, to make it a rivalry game, but we're trying to do that. Excited about our non-conference opponents this year. Week one, we play U University of Cincinnati. Luke Fickle's the head coach there. They obviously they went to college football playoffs, AAC conference champions. And he was AFCA Coach of the Year. We're excited about that game. Week three, we play Missouri State. Bobby Petrino, uh, 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 
Arkansas coach had great success at the University of Arkansas, has been in the, in the FCS playoffs the last two seasons. BYU, uh, they're 21 and 4. Um, they have two top 20 finish, finishes over the last two years, 20 returning starters. We go to BYU. And then Liberty, they have three straight bowl wins under Coach Freeze. We all know about Coach Freeze. We have 12 starters returning, six on offense, four on defense, two special teams with Cam Little and Reed Bauer on the special teams. We have three super seniors returning, Dalton Wagner, Bumper Pool, and Dorian Gerald. Portal additions, we had nine. We, we ended up with two wide receivers, four D linemen, one linebacker, two DBs. Five of those were at uh, our spring practice. Uh, they practiced this spring. Four of them uh, came in this summer. We all ex we expect and every one of them to contribute to our success. We'd like our program to reflect our state, the great state of Arkansas. Loyal, tough, hardworking. One of our goals every year is to make the state of Arkansas proud of the football team. In my office is a sign that says you're not coming to play for the University of Arkansas, you're coming to play for the state of Arkansas. And it's true, true to the core. We've established a true home field advantage in our stadium because of the state's passion for the Razorbacks. From 219 to 21, we were number two in the nation, number one in SEC, with fan attendance increase of 14,000 fans, additional fans per game. Modern Jamie and I are honored to represent um, the University of Arkansas, um, honored to be the head coach at Arkansas. I want to thank all the media for your work and helping us tell our story. With that, I'll take questions. Thank you, Coach. If you have a question, raise your hand. We have Allie, Lexi, and Blake. Uh, we'll get a microphone to you. Please uh, stand if you can and uh, give your name and affiliation. So we're going to start right here in the center aisle, uh, right in the near aisle. Good morning, Coach. Good morning. Uh, you're in a unique situation knowing you were a former head coach, high school level, junior college level, and now at Arkansas. How has that helped you now in this, you know, this landscape that we see now, not only the normal recruiting process, but also the transfer portal as well? Yeah, I remember being the head coach at Hutchinson Junior College, and they said you had to have 120, 140 kids on your team. And I went out west of Kansas and recruited, recruited, recruited. So, you know, at a junior college, you're going to recruit 85, 90 kids every year. And uh, it's kind of crazy. So, yeah, I've been raised up with, with um, uh, a lot of people. And that's what basically what the portal is doing now. With us, we, we signed 22 and 9, you know. So we signed 31 scholarships, which is unheard of two years ago, if that's what, if, 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 if you know what I'm saying. So it's been, um, you know, change uh, happens. And it just depends on if you're willing to deal with the change or, are you going to fight the change? And uh, for us, we're willing to do whatever we can to make our football team the best. Coach, we're going to go right over here on our left side, second row. Uh, Matt Stahl, Columbia Tribune. Uh, what do you think of the job Barry Odom has done there the last few years, and how different do you expect the defense to look this year? Well, we lost a lot of players off of, off our defense. We did. Uh, we felt like we did a nice job of getting some portal guys to help us. And obviously, we're, we're uh, advancing the guys we had on our team. Barry Odom's a key, key uh, part of the University of Arkansas's success, along with Kendall Brow, along with all our coaches. But he's a very, very key part, and especially because he helps me, and he still helps me. Um, I'm, a, I'm a work in progress, and uh, he helps me uh, with head coaching, uh, responsibilities. I bounce everything off of him still to this day. Um, but Barry Odom is one of the most loyal, wonderful people that there is in the, in the country. And he's unbelievable loyal to myself and the university. And, and I'm really, really happy that he's part of our staff. Coach, we're going to go over on our right-hand side over on this right aisle. 
Hey, Coach. Steve Moulton, WZZN. Hope you're doing well. Um, Wide receiver position in particular, if you could evaluate that for me, Coach, and also the role that Malik Hornsby could play on this team. Yeah, well, I think, you know, obviously the unsaid thing there was Burks, you know, losing Traylon Burks. And and I I don't know you replace a guy one for one. I don't think you you can, you know, there. So we're going to have to do it by committee. Uh, I like – uh, a couple of the guys we've gotten in the portal and Matt Landers and, and Jaden Hazelwood. But I think Keytron Jackson is going to have his best year. I think he's ready to go. Warren Thompson's ready to go. Bryce Stevens is, is, has improved. You know, I like who we signed out of the freshman class. It's still yet to be determined whether they can, you know, help us or not. Um, um, Isaiah Satana, uh, you know, um, uh, Bake, Sam Bake, and uh, Quincy McAdoo. They've all uh, had good off season, or one had off season in summer. Uh, but we're going to have to do it by committee. I- I'll say this we look like a wide receiver group, we run like a wide receiver group. KJ is going to have to get comfortable with where these guys are going to be, and he has to get comfortable with their speed and the way they run their routes and all those things. But I think we're going to have to replace Burks by committee. That was certainly probably the number one thing offensively that was concerning. Along with Malik, we have used him at wide receiver. He's fast. He has natural ball skills. We need to get him on the field. If he doesn't beat K.J. out in, 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 the, in fall camp, he needs to be on the field. He's fast. He's up to 190 pounds now. He can st- withstand the heat and, and uh, hits, physicality. But the other thing that helped us is Cade Fortin. So getting Cade Fortin in at quarterback allows us a little bit to lo- move lo- Malik Hornsby out and look at him at wide out. But he's a good enough player. He needs to be on the field. So he's certainly got a chance to help us there as well. Pitch will go right in front of me about midway back in the green. Good morning, Coach. Jacob Goins from ESPN 106.7 in Auburn. What does it mean for you to be a part of the Arkansas Athletic Department that has become one of the best in the entire country across all major sports? Well, I th- we got to get better. I mean, if you're in Arkansas right now, everybody's doing so much more than we are. And uh, so we have to get better. But uh, seriously, it's, it's unbelievable. You know, when the basketball team goes to lead eight and Dave and them go to the World Series and Courtney and them – Win the SEC and it can go on soccer, women's soccer, won the SEC and Bucky and them won the SEC in track. It's unbelievable. I think you have to look at those individual coaches and you certainly have to look at Hunter Yurichek and his staff, but it's a great time to be a hog now. And uh, uh, I think everybody in the state's pumped up about sports. Uh, you can see that in ticket sales and revenue of those things as well. And uh, I'm certainly excited to be a part of it. Which will go same section right in front of me, four rows back. Kirk. Uh, Kirk Bowles from the Austin American Kirk. Statesman. Congratulations on your great year, Sam. Uh, Thank you. Do you feel like, are you comfortable saying Arkansas has arrived? No. And uh, a second question, do you want Texas and Oklahoma as permanent rivals? Yes. First answer, no. Um, <laughs> no, 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 no. Arkansas is just trying to compete. We're trying to get better. We're trying to, you know, we, we, we're trying to fight hard. We're trying to work hard. We, we're the underdog. We like it that way. No, no, no. We're, we're away from that. Now, we will compete. I'm, we'll do that. Roll it out there and let's play ball. But no, no, no. We, we, not that. Um, what was your second one? Yes. Oh, Oklahoma and Texas. You know, it was fun playing Texas last year. Obviously, you know, it was one year, and we, we had a nice game against them and those things. I have a lot of respect for Sark, Coach Sark and, and, the, and, the, and the Longhorns. Oklahoma would be another rival with, that would be pretty cool, um, to be honest with you. If we could play Texas, Oklahoma, Missouri, that would be, that'd re- be really neat. I'm not the schedule maker. Uh, I'm just a football coach. But to answer your question, that would be – That'd be a really uh, cool deal growing up in the state of Oklahoma. Coach, we're going to go over here to the right in the middle. Connor O'Gara, Saturday Down South. Um, 
the the hog statue on your property. Uh, can you explain the backstory uh, as to what led to that, and was that before or after you knew you had a new contract coming? Oh, I like that last pitch. <laughs> the hog statue, I bought the Marlin house. It's big old Marlin. Had a big Marlin over here. Had a guy catching the Marlin over here. It's kind of a peninsula that comes down in the water. Guy over here, he like this, and he was hooking the Marlin on the other, other part of it. Well, we bought it, Jamie and I bought it on August 1st, and August 3rd, the storm came through, knocked the marlin down. Marlin shot water into the lake. So uh, my mind went to a slobbering hog. Insurance company, insurance company came through. Brandon White was the guy I called about, about the hog, and he, he made it into, um, I just thought the hog was going to be out there. This thing's incredible to be honest with you but he's got a lights on him he's got red whatever color lights you want the 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 water shoots up and then it looks like he's slobbering uh down into the lake and that's the story behind it and uh it's it's really it's really kind of cool and that's boats on parade coming you know to to the house down there the guys go and they call the hogs and try to get on it it says a lot of signs says don't get on the hog but there are a few people that do i wish they'd read the sign hey coach we'll go over here in the uh, section in front of me about midway back hey coach drew barrett espn arkansas i know you talk about how you like to be an underdog but it's your third year at arkansas the first time you're not being picked to finish seventh in the sec west doesn't it feel kind of good to be recognized for the success that you and your players have had and and how, how's it been different this season where you're actually getting, you know, credit from a lot of people? You know, I said when I got the head coaching job that the only decisions that I'd make, they would not concern public opinion. That way, if, if we win, we win as a group. And if we lose and I get fired, I get fired because I did it like I wanted to. So, uh, Obviously, you can't you can't live in a cave and not hear what people say about you or predictions and all that stuff. But that, if that's the only driving force that you have, you're going you're gonna to lose. Uh, if that's the only driving force to be good, you're going to lose. Um, so if we can keep our core values of let's go let's go out work people, let's out tough people, let's play let's be the hardest playing team in football. I don't know if we are or not. That's the goal. And that, by the way, that's the expectation. Uh, then whatever people may say, um, everybody has a mouth. Everybody has an opinion. Some of them, the opinions are worthy and some aren't. But uh, so I'm going to let our football team, myself, drive what we, what we need to accomplish. And uh, if we do, kids, the kids and the coaching staff did a great job. If we don't. I screwed it up. All right, Coach, we'll go right down here in front. Tom? Hey, Tom Murphy, Arkansas Democrat. Hey, Tom. Hey, my question is about the defensive line. Yeah. Do, you, do you like the numbers and the talent there? And Dorian Gerald, uh, can you maybe talk about his story a little bit and what he might be able to do for you? Well, Dorian Gerald's been there so long, I told him the other day, I think Houston Nutt brought him in. I mean, he's been there for 100 I don't know how long he's been there. But uh, so Dorian, Dorian – um, you know, we, we obviously need pass, pass rushers. I love the numbers. Actually, we're over, to be honest with you, on, on numbers there. We've got 20 counting walk-ons. Um, but we need, we need some elite pass rushers. We went and got Landon Jackson there. Obviously, Zach Williams is returning. Jashad Stewart's returning. Uh, Eric Gregory can do either or. Um, you know, we, we signed Jordan Dominique. Um, so, uh, we think we can get to the quarterback a little bit more. We also feel a little better with our corner situation where we can play a little man coverage. we got to get guys behind the chains on first down. We did better last year. We have to continue to get better. Having man-to-man -man corners is going to help you do that. But um, I, I feel a lot better. Isaiah Nichols on the inside, Cam Ball. Obviously losing Torian Carter for, a, for a, whatever the period of time it is hurt us. Uh, he was having a wonderful uh, spring. 
but other than that, I, I feel good. Terry Hampton coming in, you know, I feel good about uh, Taylor Lewis, some of those guys, and, and uh, we'll see what happens. But uh, I think we'll be much better on the D-line than we were a year ago. Coach, we're going to go over on our left-hand side on the far aisle. Good morning, Coach. Good morning. Matt, Matt Bascona with ESPN Baton Rouge. Sure. Uh, you and LSU kind of had a little player swap this year of yeah. sorts. Uh, what are you expecting from Dwight McLaughlin and Landon Jackson? What's LSU getting in Greg Brooks and Joe Fouché? Well, let's go what LSU is getting. Two fine, fine, fine kids. Uh, ones that were never in trouble. Ones gave everything for the University of Arkansas. And we're very, very happy uh, that they were on our football team. They'll work hard. They're good kids. They're good players. And uh, certainly um, when you go – uh, on the, in the same division, it's it's harder, uh, you know, certainly. The, uh, but great kids, great parents, um, and Coach Kelly got two fine, fine football players. For us, um, Nudy or excuse me, Dwight McLaughlin um, is a guy we think can play man-to-man -man cover corner. More importantly, he thinks he can play man-to-man -man <laughs> cover corner. And he can. He's long. Uh, I like I like him a lot. Um, Landon Jackson came over with an injury. Wonderful person, wonderful kid. He's just now healthy. He can run. Now. I mean, he can run, run, long. And uh, so we felt like, uh, not necessarily from LSU, but we felt like some of our issues were rushing the passer as a defensive end and a cover man-to-man -man cover corner situation. Not that we don't have them, but we needed more. Um, we felt like we, we did well in, uh, with those two guys in the portal. Yeah, we have time for a couple more. We're going to start here on the center aisle, on the near aisle in front of me. Hey, Coach. Chris Marler, Saturday on South. You, uh, you brought up the schedule. I don't know if you know this, but you're 16-6 and six against the spread, so I wanted to say thank you. How much? 16-6. Go Hogs. Love it. Um, my, my question is, you brought up how difficult the schedule's been and you're not in control of it. You're the most likable coach in the conference, possibly the country. Who's doing this to you with the scheduling? And is there plans to kind of scale that back a little bit moving forward? Well, you know, schedules are scheduled out so many years in advance and nobody knew, you know, maybe they did. I don't know, but... Cincinnati, when they were scheduled, I'm not for sure. Well, I know they weren't in the college football playoffs. Um, and then BYU, BYU's always been really, really, you know, they've been a good program, but they're at the, they're at the top of their game. You know, well, not top. Uh, they, I think they played for a national championship a few years back, or not McMahon or who. I may be all messed up on that one. But... Uh, uh, being 21 and four and having 20 starters coming back, you know, I, I laugh at home saying, you know, they're trying to fire me, but um, I hope not. I mean, I like it there. And uh, so I think with the realignment, which thank you for not asking me that question. I think with the realignment, I think everything is trying to become fair. And right now the West, if you're in the West, it's a beast. Now I'm not saying the East isn't either now. But the West is sure enough, and uh, you add that, and then you play another couple, two or three teams in your non-conference schedule that are go-getters. It's hard. It's hard to maintain. You know, last year we went 4-0, and and then, you know, somebody said, well, you're not going to be able to slip up on anybody. Well, we didn't slip up on Georgia last year either. I think they knew we was coming in there. And uh, so uh, – I don't know. I, I, at one point, I'm, I'm hoping that it'll, it'll ease up a little bit, but right now it's, it hasn't. Mitch, we'll take one final question over to our right on the edge. Ken. Good morning, Coach. Ken Caps from Football Writers of America. Okay. After the beating of uh, Texas last year, yeah. what message do you have for the Oklahoma and Texas fans oh coming over to the SEC, and also, what are the most played songs on your jukebox in your office? We love you, Texas and Oklahoma. Can't wait for you to come over. We got a great place. I don't know what to tell them. I mean, OU, I was a kid, 
rooted for the Sooners when I was a young kid until I moved over to eastern Oklahoma where I became a Razorback fan. Storied football program. You know, we're, we're, we're having recruiting battles with them right now. Thank the Lord, because before we couldn't get in the door. Uh, but we're having recruiting battles. We, we are having recruiting battles with Texas. I'm not telling you we're whipping them or anything like that. I'm telling you we're in the we're in the conversation. Um, so it's so close, you know. And and you have two storied programs there. And and uh, I, but I would tell them that um, the set, what they already know. It's it's a hell of a league and. It's about big people and fast people, you know. It's just not not no different, not any different probably than the Big 12, but consistently each week you you better have some depth. And uh, those guys are great coaches over there at Texas, Oklahoma. They know that. And the most thing on my jukebox, uh, the most played thing right now is a little Stevie Nicks. You know, I love her, and I don't know her. I don't mean that. You know, I hope Jamie didn't hear me say that. I mean, but I like her. You know, and, and I like Fleetwood Mac, and but on my I'm listening to a four song rundown right now. If I if I can do eight, and then come back with the top two, I can get my two mile walk in. So that's what I'm doing right now. Coach, thank you for your time this morning. Go Hogs! Thank you very much.